Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 23 of my Algebra Tutorials series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to cover so many things. I'm going to talk about symmetric functions. I'm going to talk about seven fundamental function graphs, so you'll be able to know exactly what the graph's going to look, at, look like just by looking at the equation. I'm also going to show you how to quickly graph quadratic equations, as well as look at a graph of a quadratic equation and convert it back into an estimated equation. And I have so much to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so what is a symmetric function? It is a function that has sides that are reflections of each other. And I'm going to use these three sample functions here on the left side to show you exactly what I mean by that. So let's take the first function that has an absolute value inside of it. And what I want to do here is just graph this out. So well, I'm going to show you easier ways to do this so you don't really have to use tables and such. But what we have here are the individual points for this absolute value. And you can see here that if we come in and then draw out our graph, that the left side and the right side are reflections of each other. And this is specifically, this first function is what I'm talking about, is what is called as y-symmetric because the graph on the left of the y-axis is a reflection of what is on the right. And what you get whenever you have an absolute value is that the absolute value of x is always going to equal the same value for y. And why it's important to understand and recognize symmetry is it's going to make it easier for you to plot equations. And just to restate this in another way in regards to functions or equations that have absolute value, you know that you will have one if you can replace x with minus x and still get the same y value. All right, so now let's go and let's look at another equation, which is our second one we have right here. You might notice that we have x on the left side of the equal sign and y on the right. And if we go and we create a table for this, so we have x and y, and I perform these calculations. This time I'm going to use y is going to be negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then I'm going to perform the calculation to find the values for x, which are going to be negative 5 and 0 and 3 and 4 and 3 and negative 5. If I then go and plot this out, you're going to get an interesting look here. We're going to have a point here. We're going to have a point here and here, point here and here. And then we will have a point here as well as here. All right. Whoops, that's not right. Be right there. Okay, and if we then go and graph this out, you can see that we are getting much the difference here. And in this situation, this is what we would call a x-symmetric equation. And you'll know that you have an x-symmetric equation if you can replace y with a negative y and still get the same value of x. So it's very similar, of course, to the y-symmetric equations. So let's go and create another one. This is the third one, of course, that we have right here. And what we're going to create this time is what is called an origin symmetry. And so if we go and perform these calculations here to find x and y, this time we're going to have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then this is going to become a 30. This is going to become a 10. This is going to become a 2. This remains 0. This is going to be negative 2, negative 10, and negative 30. And just by looking at this, we know that this is an origin symmetry equation or an origin symmetric equation because we can see that when x is replaced by a negative x, that y is going to be replaced by a negative y. And if we go and plot this out, we're going to get a plot that in this situation looks exactly like this. And once again, that is called an origin symmetric equation or graph. Now I'm going to talk about some basic functions that you're going to see all of the time. And I'm going to first talk about polynomial functions. Now this first one here 
is what we would call a constant function. And basically, no matter what the value of x changes to, you're always going to get the same value for y. So if that occurs, then you know you're dealing with a constant function. Then after that, we have an identity function, and you'll be able to recognize them because for every point you have of x, it is going to be equal to the value of y. So basically, no matter what x is, y is always going to be equal to it. And in that situation, you'll have an identity function. After that, we're going to have either a quadratic or a squaring function. And if you did not notice, I have the functions up here, say right there and right there and then over here also, and also up here. And we're going to cover the squaring or quadratic equations in a lot of detail as this tutorial continues here in a minute. And then finally, for your polynomial functions, you have a cubing function. And you can see here with this function that you are going to have some value of x that is cubed. And you can also see that this is symmetric across the origin. And then you have your non-polynomial functions. And what we have here first is what is called a reciprocal function. And this is the type of look that you would end up getting whenever you have a value of x in the denominator. After that, we have an absolute value function. And the whole point of me showing you this is so that you will be able to see the function and immediately at least have a rough idea of what the graph should look like. And then finally, we have our square root function. And of course, that would occur whenever you would take the square root of some value of x. And now what I want to do is I want to talk about graphing quadratic equations and to give you a really solid grasp of how to graph them and then how to look at a graph and convert it back into an equation. So what we are using here is this is going to be of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And if we would come in here and say that we would like to graph, let's say, the function of x squared. This is much what it's going to look like. It's a parabola. And what you might think about is what happens whenever the value of a changes? Well, I'm going to show you. So let's say, well, I can just tell you off, right? As a's value increases, the, par the parabola is going to be more squashed because the slope on the lines going out from the origin are going to be much stronger depending upon how big the value of a is. So what, what I want to do here is I'm going to take a function and this is going to be equal to 2x squared. And you can see here if I would come in and plot it that it is going to go up much quicker or have a squash type of look. So it's still a parabola. It's just going to be more squashed together. On the other end, you might ask yourself, well, what happens when the value of a should get smaller? So we can create another function. Let's say this is 1 half x squared. Well, if we come and graph that out, what you're going to see is that as the value of a gets smaller, your parabola is going to get wider. Okay? And then you may say to yourself, well, what happens if the value of a is negative? Starting to run out of colors here. Let's use black here. So in this situation, let's say we have a negative x squared. Well, in that situation, the parabola is going to flip. And in that situation, your plot or your graph or whatever you want to call it is going to look like this for a negative x squared. All righty. So I think you should have a good understanding of how changes in a are going to affect a quadratic function. And now what I want to do is show you a quick way how to plot this quadratic formula. So let's say that we have 2x squared minus 8x plus 4. And we want to figure out where the bottom of our parabola will be. Well, we can use a couple formulas. So we can find the value of x for the bottom of our, par our parabola. And what I mean by the bottom is like if we have a parabola, like a point 
down here. This is the point that we are trying to find, all right? So H is actually gonna be the X part of it, and the formula you're gonna use is H is going to be equal to negative B, which is gonna be that, divided by two times A, which is gonna be that value. And if we go and we perform this calculation, B is eight, and it is going to be divided by two times two, or four, and we're going to get a value of two, of course. All right, so now all we need to do is go and plug that value of H by plugging it into this formula here, everywhere you see an X, and then solve for the Y part of it. So we're gonna label the Y part of it K. So this is going to be equal to two times two squared. The two part here obviously is from the H, and then this is going to be minus eight times two plus four. And if we go and we solve this, we're going to end up having eight minus 16 plus four, and that is going to be equal to negative four. So we know that the point that we are going to be plotting here at the bottom of the parabola is going to be two, which comes from right here, and negative four, which comes from right here. And we can go and plot that right now by going two and four right there. So that is the bottom of our parabola. And now all we need to do is go and figure out one other point, which is gonna tell us another point, and then we can go and draw a very close estimate of this equation really quickly, I think you can see. So what can we do? Well, we can go and plug a zero into this formula here for our uh, equation. And if we do, that is going to give us a value of four. So we can go and plot that. And we know that there is going to be a point right here. And also, because we know this is symmetric, we also know that there is going to be another point right here. And then we can just come in and we can draw in our parabola because we know that it is going to look like this. And then we can continue this line outwards from there. So that is how we can perform two calculations and draw a really close approximation of a quadratic equation. But you may say to yourself, well, that's all fine and dandy, but how do I look at a graph and then find a formula for it? Well, what we can do is we can get a very close approximation. Now, based off of what we just learned, we know that we want to find this value right here because that is going to tell us the value for H and K. So in this situation, H is going to be equal to two and K is going to be equal to negative three. We can then take our formula. This will be equal to A. And what we're gonna try to do here is we're gonna try to figure out the value for A. And this is the formula we're gonna use to do that. So we're just gonna plug those values of H and K into this formula, exactly like that. And then another thing we know is there is a point right here. Let's go and darken this right there. And we know that point is at zero, four. So we know that our function when x is zero is going to be equal to four. So we can then go and find the value for a. So a times zero minus two squared minus three is equal to four. A times four minus three is equal to four. A times four is equal to seven. So we know that a is going to have a value of seven over four or one and three fourths. And then we can go and plug this into an equation, which is gonna be one and three fourths x minus two squared minus three. And we'll know that while this is probably not 100% accurate, it is a very good approximation of our graph that we are trying to approximate. All right, so there's a whole bunch of information about graphing turning graphs into functions, and a whole lot on symmetry and fundamental function graphs. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to go and quickly draw even more of these graphs. 
So like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.